Welcome to USDTL's Talks Time on Prenatal Exposure to Xylazine Using Umbilical Cord Tissue in a High-Risk Population. I'm Sandra Andrews, an Account Development Manager at USDTL. Our presenter today is Dominique Gateron, who manages the Extractions Laboratory at USDTL. With over 14 years of experience in forensic toxicology and clinical analytical laboratories, Dominique uses her strong analytical and innovative skills to bridge the gap between academic theories and real life applications in drug testing. Dominique completed her education at the University of Illinois at Chicago. She began her career in a clinical laboratory developing endocrinology tests. With a passion for helping others through science, she transitioned to forensic toxicology at USDTL, specializing in improving sample preparation processes and contributing to continuous innovations. Dominique is an active member of the Society of Forensic Toxicology and is also a member of the Regional Toxicology and Therapeutic Drug Monitoring Group, MATT, where she serves as Vice President on the Executive Board. We are very excited to have her presenting for us today. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the kind introduction, Sandra, and thank you everyone for taking the time out today to um, discuss this very important topic about xylazine prevalence in neonatal populations. Today's presentation is titled Prenatal Exposure to Xylazine Using Umbilical Cord Tissue in a High-Risk Population. This presentation will follow the format of a scientific poster showcasing research findings conducted here at the United States Drug Testing Laboratory. This presentation will go over the limited but known basic pharmacology of xylazine and its interaction with biological systems. You will become familiar with its toxidrome, recognizing the clinical fingerprints of symptoms and signs of xylazine toxicity. We will also explore both the licit and illicit uses of xylazine globally, with a focus on statistical findings regarding its presence in the recreational drug supply. This will lead us to discuss the detection of xylazine in other substances such as depressants, hallucinogens, opioids, and stimulants in the umbilical cord tissue of babies born in 2023. Let's begin this presentation with the end in mind. Here we have our scientific poster detailing the prevalence and measured concentration of xylazine and umbilical cord tissue from a high-risk population. Now let's explore how we arrive at these results, starting with the introduction. What is xylazine? Xylazine is a sedative approved for veterinary medicine. Xylazine is an alpha-2 and generic agonist initially synthesized in 1962 by Bayer Pharmaceuticals during a targeted effort to discover an antihypertensive agent. Structurally, xylazine is similar to phenothiazine, a class of compounds containing nitrogen and sulfur widely used in psychopharmacology. Phenothiazines are considered first-generational antipsychotic medications and are employed to treat various mental and emotional disorders. Xylazine is also a structural analog of clonidine, a drug discovered around the same time period. Clonidine is used to treat high blood pressure, ADHD, drug, redraw, uh, drug withdrawal from um, uh, alcohol, opioids, and nicotine in certain pain conditions. Clonidine was granted FDA approval in 1974. And there, there at the left and bottom of the screen there. Xylazine did not pass the clinical trials for human use and was never approved for the FDA due to its severe central nervous system depression effects. Consequently, the effects of xylazine are well established in animals, but they are not to mention humans. Here to the left, we will have a picture of the functions of the symptomatic nervous system, or commonly referred to as the body's fight or flight response. Xylazine is a strong synthetic alpha-2 and generic agonist that interferes with the sympathetic nervous system's release of norepinephrine and dopamine. 
typically the sympathetic nerve located in the thoracic portion um, right here of the spinal cord release norepinephrine into the heart and blood vessels, which increase cardiac output by increasing heart rate, increases contractility, increases resistivity by squeezing the arteries and constricting veins to increase blood return to the heart. Let's take a look at xylazine's mechanism of action. The xylazine, shown right here, suppresses the central drive to release norepinephrine by activating the alpha-2 receptor, which inhibits the release of norepinephrine, confusing the cell membrane and plucking into the synapse. The lack of norepinephrine results in a loss of sympathetic outflows, resulting in a reduction of norepinephrine released to the heart and blood vessels. The heart rate is inhibited from going up Contractivity is inhibited from increasing, which leads to the relaxation of the arteries and venous constriction. As just discussed, xylazine activates the negative feedback mechanism in the presynaptic neuron to inhibit the release of norepinephrine. This loss of sympathetic nervous system outflow leads to decreased cardiac output. Xylazine's effects on cardiovascular systems can call bradycardia, a reduction in heartbeats per minute. Additionally, as an alpha-2 and generic agonist, it causes low blood pressure. Xylazine depresses the central nervous system and the respiratory system. It acts as an analgesic or painkiller, which can lead to sedation, amnesia, coma-like symptoms. It can also greatly pause and shallow the breathing. Topically, chronic use of xylazine has a, vas uh, a vasoconstrictive effect on local blood cells particularly those used for intravenous administration, leading to reduced perforation, skin ulcers, tissue necrosis, and an increased risk of infection. Additionally, xylazine can elevate blood sugar levels, which is a notable endocrine effect. In 1972, the FDA approved xylazine hydrochloride for use as a sedative in animals. The drug remains essential for veterinary veterinarians working with horses and other large animals such as cattle, deer. A small amount of this FDA-approved drug helps calm them when they're scared or they're aggressive or they're injured, um, provides pain relief, and allows veterinarians to safely examine and treat their um, injuries in close quarters. Illegally, xylazine emerged as a popular illicit substance amongst those who inject drugs in Puerto Rico in the early 2000s. Most commonly used as a part of a speedball, speedball consisting of xylazine, heroin, and cocaine, its use spread in the U.S. mainland, particularly in the northeastern states with widespread use documented in Philadelphia. Xylazine is commonly referred to as trank. When mixed with more prevalent illegal opioids like heroin or fentanyl, the mixture is known as trank dope. Xylazine is frequently combined with synthetic opioids, primarily fentanyl, and in the unregulated market. It has also been found alongside cocaine, um, methamphetamines, and more recently mixed with oxycodone and alprazolam. In September of 2022, the DEA released a report stating that xylazine is making the deadliest drug threat our country has ever faced. Fentanyl, even deadlier. DEA has seized xylazine and fentanyl mixtures in 48 of 50 states. The DEA laboratory system is reporting that in 2022, approximately 23% of fentanyl powder and 7% of fentanyl pills seized by the DEA contain xylazine. Other significant trends shown on this map is the nationwide increase of xylazine positive overdose deaths where xylazine was detected in the descendant post-mortem toxicology report. In the Northeast, there is shown a 103% increase in the detection of xylazine in overdose deaths between 2020 to 2021. In the South, there was 1,127% increase. In the Midwest, there was 516% increase. And in the West, there was a 750% increase. It's important to mention that xylazine testing was not a standard test, and the results here could, um, unfortunately, be a little bit higher. Considering the extensive toxicology effects and nationwide prevalence in postmortem lab results, we developed a method to detect xylazine in the vulnerable population of newborns. 
An informal survey of umbilical cord tissue was conducted by using specimens that were presumptive positive for fentanyl. These specimens were analyzed for the presence of xylazine through homogenization, followed by solid phase extraction and analyzing using liquid chromatography tandem mesh spectrometry. Let's take a look at the results. Of the 170 presumptive positive fentanyl samples, 30 of the specimens had detectable levels of xylazine, representing about 17.6% of the samples. The concentrations of xylazine detected, um, they spanned a, a wide range. They were as low as 0.3 nanograms per gram up to 1,322 nanograms per gram. The median concentration of xylazine was 2.27 nanograms per gram. Other drugs detected along with xylazine included amphetamine at 50%, cocaine the highest at 53%, with addition to opioids at 30%, methadone at 23%, and THC. Xylazine is a growing threat in the United States and is quickly becoming a concern in neonatal populations. Accurate identification of prenatal exposure is crucial for appropriate neonatal treatment for the best outcome. When I look at this list of detectable substances in newborn, I think of when I go to the doctor and I, or I go to the dentist or whoever it may be, the first question they always ask is, if my current list of medications or supplements is correct and do I need to make any updates? This information gives the healthcare provider awareness to make the best decision possible in treatment. Having data and facts in regards to the health of this voiceless population is imperative, which is why USDPL launched in September of 2023, xylazine testing and umbilical cord tissue. In conclusion, xylazine, initially developed as a veterinary sedative, has emerged as a significant illicit substance across the United States. Its potent effects on the central nervous system and cardiovascular system, including severe central nervous system depression, bradycardia, and low blood pressure, pose substantial health risks. Despite its critical role in veterinary medicine, xylazine's unauthorized use in humans has led to its combined combination with other deadly substances, exacerbating its uh, adverse effects. Our investigation highlights the presence of xylazine in a substantial portion of fentanyl-positive umbilical cord tissue samples, with concentrations ranging from 0.3 nanograms per gram to 1,322 nanograms per gram. This alarming prevalence accentuates the urge and need for effective detection methods. The presence of other substances, such as in amphetamines, cocaine, methadone, opioids, and THC further complicates the clinical big picture. Given the rapid spread of xylazine and its association with significant health risks, particularly in vulnerable populations like newborns, accurate identification of prenatal exposure is crucial. Implementing reliable detection methods for xylazine and umbilical cord tissue will enable timely and appropriate neonatal treatment, improving outcomes, and safeguarding the health of our youngest and most vulnerable. I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to each of you for your attention and engagement throughout this presentation. As colleagues with a shared vision of protecting and enriching lives, I trust that together we can address the challenges posed by xylazine and other substances of misuse to ensure the well-being of our communities. Thank you once again. Subscribe to our channel and visit our website for more information.